In 2005, researchers at Princeton gathered black and white headshots of all the winners and runners-up in 95 races for the U.S. Senate and 600 races for the House of Representatives from 2000, 2002, and 2004. Then they assembled a group of volunteers to evaluate the candidates' competence based on just a quick look at the photographs, discarding the data on any of the faces a volunteer recognized. The results were astonishing. The candidate the volunteers perceived as more competent had won in 72% of the Senate races and 67% of the House races, even higher success rates than in the California laboratory experiment. Then, in 2006, the scientists performed an experiment with even more astonishing, and when you think about it, depressing, results. They conducted the face evaluations before the elections in question and predicted the winners based solely on the candidate's appearance. They were strikingly accurate. The candidate voted as more competent looking, went on to win 69% of the gubernatorial races and 72% of the Senate races. I've gone into detail regarding these political studies, not just because they are important in themselves, but because, as I said earlier, they shed light on our broader social interactions. In high school, our vote for class president might be based on looks. It would be nice to think that we outgrow those primitive ways, but it's not easy to graduate from our unconscious influences. In his autobiography, Charles Darwin reported that he was almost denied the chance to make his historic voyage on the Beagle on account of his looks, in particular because of his nose, which was large and somewhat bulbous. Darwin himself later used his nose, facetiously, as an argument against intelligent design, writing, Will you honestly tell me whether you believe that the shape of my nose was ordained and guided by an intelligent cause? The Beagle's captain wanted to keep Darwin off the ship because he had a personal belief that you could judge character by the shape of the nose, and a man with Darwin's, he felt, could not possibly possess sufficient energy and determination for the voyage. In the end, of course, Darwin got the job. Of the captain, Darwin later wrote, I think he was afterwards well satisfied that my nose had spoken falsely. Toward the end of The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy and company approached the great wizard, offering him the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the West. They can only see fire, smoke, and a floating image of the wizard's face as he responds in booming, authoritative tones that have Dorothy and her cohorts trembling with fear. Then Dorothy's dog Toto tugs aside a curtain, revealing that the ominous wizard is just an ordinary-looking man speaking into a microphone and pulling levers and twisting dials to orchestrate the fireworks. He yanks the curtain closed and admonishes, Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. But the jig is up, and Dorothy discovers that the wizard is just a genial old man. There is a man or woman behind the curtain of everybody's persona. Through our social relationships, we get to know a small number of beings with a level of intimacy that allows us to peel back the curtain. Our friends, close neighbors, family members, and perhaps the family dog, though certainly not the cat. But we don't get to pull the curtain very far back on most of the people we meet, and it's usually drawn fully closed when we encounter someone for the first time. As a result, certain superficial qualities, such as voice, face and expression, posture, and the other nonverbal characteristics I've been talking about, mold many of the judgments we make about people. The nice or nasty people we work with, our neighbors, our doctors, our kids' teachers, the politicians we vote for or against, or simply try to ignore. Every day, we meet people and form judgments like, I trust that babysitter, this lawyer knows what she is doing, or that guy seems like the type who would gently stroke my back while reciting Shakespeare sonnets by candlelight. If you are a job applicant, the quality of your handshake can affect the outcome of your employment interview. If you are a salesperson, your degree of eye contact can influence your rating of customer satisfaction. If you are a doctor, the tone of your voice can have an impact on not only your patient's assessment of their visit, but their propensity to sue if something goes wrong. We humans are superior to cowbirds in our conscious understanding, but we also have a deep inner cowbird mind that reacts to nonverbal cues uncensored by those logical judgments of consciousness. The expression, to be a real human being, means to act with compassion. Other languages have similar expressions, such as the German Ein Mensch sein. A human being by nature cannot help but pick up on the emotions and intentions of others. That ability is built into our brains, and there is no off switch.